Welcome to the Evidence Informed Teaching Podcast. Are you a teacher wanting to improve your classroom practice and deliver excellent teaching through access to research? Do you have a passion for teaching and are looking to connect with other like-minded colleagues through professional discussions? The Charter College has partnered with TeacherTap to support teachers to deliver excellent teaching through access to research and we invite you to be part of this community. On this podcast you will hear from fellow teachers, research experts and you have the opportunity to be part of this professional discussion. You can find out more about the Charter College of Teaching and Teacher Tap in the show notes and if you find this episode helpful why not share it with a teacher friend, take a screenshot and post it on your social media or even better leave us a five star written review. So my name's Alex Dean, I live and work in West Yorkshire. I work at Bingley Grammar School, which is a comprehensive secondary school, despite its name, Uh, over 1,800 children, 200 staff. I'm the senior deputy head teacher there, and my areas of responsibility are around quality assurance, professional development, early career teacher provision, and kind of staffing in general. I also still teach, um, and I'm an English teacher. Teaching was not my plan at university. I was never one of these people who kind of grew up wanting to be a teacher. My route into teaching was I completed a degree in English with Italian. Originally, I wanted a job with travelling and languages, and then some things kind of changed on a personal level, and I kind of started thinking a bit more and decided that teaching was something that I was interested in. I did have a family precedent. My aunt my grandfather were teachers. Ironically, I really had to fight for a place on my PGC to become a teacher because my my degree was in Italian. I had to really fight to become an English teacher and kind of take them onto the PGCE course. I feel really lucky that I kind of made that decision. I got onto the PGCE because I just think it's such an important profession and such an important job to do. And the the kind of sphere of influence you have, the number of children you work with over a teaching career, I think is really significant. So for me, I kind of got into education almost not by mistake as such, but it certainly wasn't a long-term plan, but haven't ever really regretted a moment of it. Um, so I'm kind of over 25 years in now, and I still enjoy every day. There's something every day, normally from a child, that kind of makes me laugh. So it's a really good profession for me to be in, and I'd recommend it, obviously. Both my daughters have just become teachers as well, so we're obviously carrying it through the family line, so to speak. Without a doubt, the main challenges for the profession at the moment are around recruitment and retention. I think we're entering a little bit of a scary time in education. We are uh, not hitting recruitment figures for many areas of teaching. We are not necessarily retaining people as well as we should be doing. Um, I think there's a lot of people kind of really thinking about it as a profession. And for me, the challenge is about kind of recruiting the right people to the profession but actually keeping them there and and making sure that they're happy and fulfilled um, because I I do fear that we are losing more and more people from the profession and that's a scary place to be for our future children. I made a decision to embark on the chartered teacher status, the leadership pathway. Um, It was a very personal decision. There wasn't an external leverage in terms of my management wanting to do it, wanting me to complete it. I saw it advertised. It looked really interesting. I kind of felt I I was ready to do something a little bit more in terms of my own learning and professional growth. Um, I've done MPQH some years ago. Uh, I did a master's degree some years ago in education, leadership and management. And I just kind of wanted something for myself to challenge myself. Um, I actually applied during COVID. And I think part of it for me as well was it was a bit of an um, antidote to the pressures of COVID, which were really day-to-day reactive with real feeling of uncertainty. And I kind of wanted to do something which felt like I was looking towards the future and looking kind of more strategically at things rather than kind of getting sucked down into the situation that we're in at the time. So I did it on a personal level. I think it has been really useful on a professional level, both in terms of my confidence as a school leader, if and when I choose to kind of apply for the next steps I think it would really stand me in good stead then it really was as simple as kind of seeing it being interested and like a lot of things it's kind of just stopping and actually doing it rather than looking at it being interested and then just moving on the thing I enjoyed most about the pathway uh, was the level of challenge I might not have always said that during the process uh, but actually certainly looking back at it I kind of enjoyed the reading that I had to do I enjoyed kind of using my brain 
I like the flexibility that the qualification pathway gave me. A, a lot of professional development tends to be on rails, as in you do this module, this unit, and everybody does the same. What I liked with this was you could shape it towards your own experience, your own interest, what was going on in your own school. I mean, even today, and I did the qualification some time ago, I'm going to go back into one of my assignments to get some definitions out um, of, of some key keywords to do with something I'm preparing for CPD this year at my school. I just really enjoyed kind of moving, I suppose, moving it up a level and, and having to work a little bit, if I'm honest, in terms of kind of using my brain. My favourite unit was the final unit and I liked it because I found it really useful for the role that I had. It was looking at a feedback system I'd launched and developed and it was very much about kind of auditing it, doing a literature review around it. I liked the academic rigour of it. I liked the kind of, I suppose, the reading wormhole that it led me down. Um, but I also liked it because it gave me something really useful for my school in terms of research I conducted. Uh, looking at the system, but also thinking about next steps and what I wanted to do. So I enjoyed it, I think, because it just had such relevant applications. I haven't changed roles. It's not like I got my charter status, then immediately started applying for different jobs, mostly because I'm really happy at the moment where I am and what I do. Uh, what it did do was give me more confidence in the role that I've got in terms of the decisions I make, in terms of becoming a lot more evidence informed when I'm do when I'm kind of designing professional development, when I'm speaking to staff about things, when I'm putting things into place. It kind of has allowed me to develop a little bit more rigour around what I'm doing. So I think for me, it was the process that's been really powerful for my career so far rather than the end qualification because the skills it kind of developed in me are skills which I'm using you know day after day quite a long time after I've completed the qualification. I think the chartered pathway is really valuable in terms of developing your skills as a practitioner. Um, for me certainly massive value in terms of developing my reflective skills and my evaluative skills. It feels like a worthwhile qualification and again looking at the value you've kind of got to work for it. So it has a value there that once you get that status, you feel there's a value to it. It actually means something, you've done something for it. And um, so for me, that's that's the value. It, it wasn't always easy. At times it was very challenging, but then one would argue things that have value sometimes are not that easy to do. And you've kind of got to take that on board. So for me, that's where the value came from. The charter status um, and its impacts upon my career in the future. Um, I haven't really got a really clear answer to this. I think it, it's certainly about helping me in the role that I've got now in terms of my confidence and my skill set. I do believe if I kind of seek a promotion, I think having this qualification will potentially give me something more to talk about, potentially will be something which people might look at and be interested on in terms of my CV. Again, I suppose it's for me, it's the process that has that impact in the future, because it's just kind of making you a bit of a better practitioner or more reflective practitioner, if nothing else. I think charter status is important for the profession moving forward. I think it's about the valuing teaching as a profession. It's about recognising that you're teacher training doesn't finish when you finish teacher training your ECT or what have you and many professional bodies have chartered status to recognize when people are working effectively um, within their profession I think at times the teaching profession is not as valued as it should be I am going to think that as part of it and I think it's a way for teachers themselves to recognize the value of the profession but what I'd like to see in the future is that it becomes a charter status has become something that's recognised outside of the profession as well as a mark of somebody's quality, engagement with the profession, kind of their passion for the progression, uh, for the profession, sorry. So in the future, I think we need to get more people having this status, but we need to have people also really kind of understanding perhaps what this means. My takeaways from the experience of kind of follow, following the chartered programme, I really enjoyed the opportunities to work with people outside of my locality, outside of my phase, my specialism, uh, still in touch with a couple of them now, even after the qualification, qualification has finished. So for me, my takeaway, I suppose, was working with different people, listening to different people, reading different things and 
as well, I'm, I'm not going to lie, a takeaway was the satisfaction of having completed the programme. Um, and it was a really good feeling when, when, that, when it had been completed. I would recommend the Chartered Path to friends and colleagues for a, a number of reasons, really. I think it really does develop your skill set. It really does make you more reflective. It makes you evaluate your own practice and ask some difficult questions. And I would really recommend it to people in terms of just sharpening and developing their own professional practice, especially now you can do it in a more of a modular form where actually you can then shape that learning to kind of your other commitments and what you need to achieve. And I think just the satisfaction you get from completing the qualification makes it well worthwhile. I believe teachers need to focus on their CPD because Ironically, teaching is quite a solitary experience. Yes, you're in a classroom and you've got 25 students in front of you, but quite often as teachers, we're kind of working in isolation and we don't necessarily get that feedback from our peers, from other adults. And it's very, very easy in teaching to kind of find out what works for you and just stick to that and it feels safe. And really, if, if we're going to be the best we can be for the students that we teach, we've got to keep improving, we've got to keep growing, we've got to keep getting better as teachers, no matter whether you're 22 years old just starting or in your 50s and kind of moving towards the end of your career. It's really important that each year you're the best that you can be, thereby the professional development helps you to do that.